All right, how's everyone going? Good? Everyone full belly, nice cake? Yeah. Yeah? All right, so as he said, my name's Mick. I have been many things over my life. Uh, we'll get straight into who I am. Who am I? I'm Mick the WordPress mentor now, but I haven't always been that. I used to be Mick the camp oven cook. I used to do all the caravan shows on the Gold Coast and Brisbane, teaching camp oven cooking. Um, but I won't get too much into all those things. And before I did camp oven cooking for the last seven years, well, I did camp oven cooking for seven years. And then before that, I worked um, seven years on the floor at Dracula's in costume and makeup running around and, um, you know, looking a lot different to what I do now. So, but yeah. And I used to do all the stage shows and stuff at caravan shows, so I'm not new to speaking in front of an audience, but it's just a different topic. Uh, a Paul who gets around, he's, he's here, he does a Gold Coast meetup. A couple of months ago, he said to me, do you want to speak at your, your local uh, meetup? And I said, no, what am I going to talk about? And he said, well, WordPress. And I, I've never done that before, but you know, I actually have, but just not in that topic. So just got to get my feet and, and have a go at doing something a bit different to, you know, um, shoveling and coals and cooking damper. So, so, um, so I, I dismissed the idea straight away, but then, you know, went home and thought about it and decided that I was enjoying the camp oven cooking because I was helping people. So I'm now helping people with websites because I prefer that than doing the dev stuff and building and everything like that. I'd rather just come in help and help people on their journey who are starting out. So this talk today is more informational than educational, and it's just to give you some points that you can go home and look into, because everyone's journey is different, and you might be already doing some of this, and you just choose what you need to research and then look into you know, implementing that in here. So who here today is a beginner? Who's starting out on their journey? Yep, a few of you. Cool. Where are we going, Brooklyn? And so why are we talking about this topic? Well, most people who are starting out get told WordPress is easy. And you know, they go out there and install WordPress on their server and put a bit of a couple of pages content on there. And then later on, they ask questions um, like these. People who are starting out tend to, you know, tend to ask questions such as these after they're building their website. How do I speed up my website? My images are slowing down my website, how can I fix this? How do I do SEO? How do I get Google to visit my website? And how do I make my site look more professional? Now these are normally things that people seem to do later on in life in their journey instead of knowing that they've got to do it from day dot and it'll be so much easier for them to do instead of costing money because they've got to change this or change that and move hosting or, or whatever. So I'm here today to try and give you guys something to you know, go home and work on to make sure that you don't have problems down the track. So basics of web design is my number one. These are in no real order other than this one. So this is about understanding the elements that go into making a website. It doesn't matter what platform you're using, whether it's WordPress, Wix, if you don't understand all the bits and pieces that make the website and how to do all that, then you're going to have a few problems down the track. So when I moved over from Joomla to WordPress, it was a pretty easy switch because I already had all that foundation and knowledge about how to build a website. It was just learning the platform that I'm using. Same as when I learned Photoshop 20 years ago, when I had to learn other programs, they all did the same thing, but just in a different way, and we had to adapt to that. So number two is web hosting. That's one of the biggest things that everyone goes to when they have um, slow websites and it's, they always run out and I, I used to do it when I first uh, built my websites, run out and buy the cheapest host I could buy and you know when you're looking at why it's slow it is one of the main reasons and people start out that because they haven't got the money but it is best to start you know investing into something that is going to be better than the cheapest option and then moving once you have um, moving and scaling to something better later on. That does grow. Another one here is SSL certificates. So this is another thing that 
hasn't, I, you know, for a long time I never had an SSL certificate, didn't have to worry about it because I never did e-commerce. But with the way, you know, Google and everyone's starting to come in, it's best to have one on your website. And a lot of the hosts don't give you a web, like some of the cheaper ones don't give it, and then they ask you to pay for it. Recently, I had a lady who um, was ringing crazy domains going, hey, my, my website's hacked. And she thought it was hacked because it was re bringing up the screen. And then, but when you clicked on it to bypass it, it took it to someone else's website on that shared hosting because it was bringing up their SSL certificate and it was confusing them. And then crazy domains are telling her that she's got to spend all this money to get it cleaned when all it was is that we just needed an SSL, but we end up just moving her to another host that was better suitable suitable for her. Um, permalinks is another one that most people, hopefully if you're watching a, a video or, or education, they tell you to do this, but sometimes I have watched, I've been doing a lot of research on how people build websites so that I can try and better myself in my education and permalinks sometimes don't get talked about and then later on, and I have had that the other day when I had to then do redirects on everything to Google because everything was indexed under, you know, the wrong thing. So it can be a, something that happens down the track that might um, cause problems. And another one is backup and restore. Uh, a lot of people go, oh, my host does backups. But then, yeah, they might do. But some hosts, you know, capitalize on this, and I know I've had this before, that they ask you to pay money to get them to restore their backup. So we shouldn't rely on our host. And some hosts, they have a button inside that enables you to restore from backup really quick, and then others, you don't have that option either. But the best way to do is use a third-party plugin that, like Updraft, and it goes to remote, and then if you ever need it, you can just restore back from that. It, you know, there's no reason why you shouldn't be backing up your website um, very regularly. Like I said, I am more about information, and hopefully you can go home and we've got some questions afterwards. And security is another one. And you know, my website's been hacked and stuff like that. There's some very easy things to try and put up some preventions to stop this from happening. And a lot of people use WordFence. And it, there is a talk later on um, by the WordFence dude about his cleaning, spending his life cleaning websites for WordFence. Um, and, you know, very easy to do that, and that way it stops people from you know, hacking. And, and another one is not using admin as a password or, or something like that. Try and use something totally different to um, what you can think. Uh, you know, a good one is using a password that is my grandma wears red socks instead of hash and slay and all the different little caps. Because when they do the brute force attacks, they put a document full of you know, information that just hits the website, and if you don't have something like WordFence stopping that from happening, then they might happen to get something that, you know, causes to them to get in. And Google Analytics is something very easy, and it is very often that I see even websites that have been built by other people that have paid, charged their money, that don't install Google Analytics, and then you ask them questions, and they're like, I don't know and they can't tell you, and it's a good way to be able to track who's coming to your website and all those sort of things, so it's you know, something that's good to, to have in, in set up um, when you're building your website. Even if you don't really look at it, it's good later on if you do get to a point, you've always got something to go back to because you've been collecting that data over the time. Even another good one is putting um, Facebook Pixel, even if you don't use it straight away, it's collecting data of people who are visiting your website, and then when you do get into Facebook ads, you've already got data built up on your audience that you can target them instead of just paying, you know, boosted posts and all that sort of stuff. Google Search Console is another important one to set up that um, it helps, you know, the way Google manage, you manage your website and how Google sees your website. So you, if you can go in there and submit your sitemap, you can, you know, get pages removed from Google and see what errors are coming up. And it's something that, you know, when you want to do redirects and stuff, it's very handy to have installed. So these are flying through. And search engine optimization. Now, this is a huge topic, and we can spend all day talking about it. But the best way to do is install things like um, Yoast and start doing a bit of on-page, even if you don't do a lot of all the other stuff that requires. 
having that and you can define all your your um, meter tiles and permalinks and all that sort of stuff and your keywords and, and things like that and and put that all into play. Um, it's really handy to, to build that. And not only do you do it on your pages and your posts, you, if you've got categories on a blog, they all should be set up with Yoast as well and put all your index, but you can spend all day talking about that. But this is just something you can go home and go, hey, I need to look at doing some SEO on my website. What do I do now? And you can get out Mr. Google or and um, find a lot of stuff. Another one that people have is slow down websites is not optimizing their images. And the best way that I find is to make sure that I optimize them before I even put them onto my website and don't just rely on a plugin to smush it afterwards. And you know, using Photoshop or any of those other things um, out there, and there are a lot of online ones if you don't have those skills or tools. But I've been using Photoshop for a long time and. I do a lot of stuff in there that you should be using in Illustrator or another program because it's easier, but I just like manually, like drawing my little man, I'd rather do that in Photoshop than um, Illustrator. I think that that's all my slides. I've thrown through those pretty quick. It, like I said, it was informational.